Let us talk now about corporate governance. Okay? The idea then that we've been discussing is that companies should try to maximize shareholder wealth. The problem is that companies are, uh, are managed by managers, right? Managers have to make this, this decision. Shareholders may not be able to make the decisions on their own. They have to rely on managers, right? And the problem is that managers, of course, are going to maximize their own wealth, right? M managers' incentives may not be to always maximize shareholder wealth, right? And there is a name for this in corporate finance. We call this the agency problem, okay? Managers, the fact that there may be a conflict between what managers are maximizing and what shareholders want, okay? So this is a different problem. Notice that this has nothing to do with social responsibility, uh, or stakeholders, it really is a problem that, is, uh, that, that belongs to the company, right? It's a conflict between managers and shareholders, right? What sort of uh, conflicts are we thinking about here, okay? For example, stealing, you know, stealing is not common in a, in a, in a, in a, in a developed economy like the U.S., but uh, it, it does happen, right, even, even in the U.S., and it, it happens in other countries as well. Sometimes managers steal uh, from, from companies. Right? Um, employing family members, right? A family member may not necessarily be the best manager, right? But if you are a CEO, you probably have a lot of power to decide who, who you are going to employ, especially if you own the company as a whole, right? So if you own a lot of stock in the company and you are the CEO, you might decide to employ a family member instead of hiring a manager in the labor market that might be a better manager. Right? That's going to be bad for shareholders, but it's going to be good for the CEO. Not working hard enough is another problem, right? Shareholders, of course, want managers to work hard, create value, but managers may be lazy and not want to put on those, the hours, right? And overspending uh, the, the uh, uh, company's money, right? Which is sort of related to stealing, but a more soft version of stealing. You know, one, one issue that, that we talk about is corporate jets. Right? So uh, corporate jet might make sense, but in some cases the corporate jet might be, the usage of corporate jet may be a little bit excessive and not be great for shareholder value. Okay? So these are just some general examples of, of what we think of as agency problems. Okay? So how do companies solve agency problems? Right? So how can you align incentives of managers and shareholders? The answer is very simple. It's probably something that you have thought about before. It's compensation. Right? If you want managers to maximize the value of the stock, the easy way to do it is to give stock to managers. Right? That is why you know, managers own so much stock in companies. Top managers like CEOs, CFOs, the, 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 you know, the, the top 5 to 10 managers of a company will typically be owning a significant chunk of the stock. Okay? And if you think about uh, this uh, um, 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 uh, practice, it does make sense, right? Because if you want managers to maximize the, 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 the stock price, it's a good way for, uh, it, this, this is a good way to do it because even if managers are maximizing their, their own wealth, they are going to end up maximizing the stock price, right? So this is the idea. However, this uh, practice of giving stock to managers has been uh, the object of a very heated debate recently. Okay? There are many observers, analysts, academics who, who, who claim that stock compensation might have gone too far. Okay? This is just some data for you to, to think about. Uh, CEO pay in the US has grown by a lot more than uh, the average pay of an employee. Right? So the average pay of, a, of, a, of an employee in the US in the period of 1980 to 2004, which is in this graph, Hasn't, uh, hasn't grown by, by much, whereas you know, the, uh, the a CEO pay has grown by 8.5% a year. Okay? It's also higher than the GDP growth rate and higher than the growth rate in corporate profits, which is 2.9%. Okay? So this kind of data, you know, we know that executives get paid a lot. CEO pay has also increased a lot in recent years. So this, this kind of data has generated this debate. You know, on whether top executives are paid too much or not. Okay? There are two sides in this debate. Uh, uh, some academics claim that you know, this is a market outcome. We shouldn't mess with it. Okay? Companies want to pay, uh, if companies want to pay a lot to hire a CEO, they should be able to do it. 
high pay is just a consequence of a demand for foreign talent, okay? But on the other hand, the people who, who, are, who, who want to, put, uh, to, to curb CEO pay, what they claim is that this argument doesn't really work because pay is determined by the board of directors and the board of directors does not always work independently from the CEO, right? The board of directors may be composed of uh, people who are friends of the CEO, who are not truly independent, and, 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 and that may lead the CEO to get paid too much, okay? A possible solution for this problem is to rely on corporate governance, right? To rely on other governance mechanisms other than compensation, right? So we think of corporate governance as any sort of mechanism that companies have to solve this conflict between managers and shareholders, okay? For example, having a truly independent board of directors may help, right? If the problem is that uh, the board of directors is not really uh, 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 independent from the CEO, what companies can do is to get some independent directors, right? A very common uh, uh, and, 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 and a recent trend in the US is, is the role of institutional investors, right? Institutional investors have large stake in firms and they can come, you know, people who own a lot of stock in firms can come and, uh, and, and, and try to change corporate practice like CEO compensation, okay? And finally, there is pressure from m and market, again, M&A matters a lot, mergers and acquisitions. If a company is inefficient, if you're paying the CEO too much and profits are going down, shareholder value is going down, you know, you might eventually die out, either be swallowed by your competitors or disappear, go bankrupt, okay? So there are ways to control this problem. There may be a role for the government as well. That's the last observation here. Following the financial crisis, the recent financial crisis of 2007 to 2009, uh, the U.S. government introduced a new uh, law, okay, according to which shareholders now have to vote to approve executive compensation. This law is being implemented now, slowly being uh, implemented, so it may be a little bit too early to, to figure out whether this law has had an effect on compensation or not. Academics are currently studying this issue. What we see so far is that in a vast majority of cases, the shareholders ended up approving the compensation that was proposed by the board, okay? Perhaps this means that the compensation packages were not wrong, were not excessive, okay? Or perhaps it means something else. It's a little bit early for us to say. I think we have to wait a little to, to be able to figure out whether say on pay is going to have an effect on executive compensation or not.